Hey there, Sharon Hornellstrom, also known as Pajama Grandma, in my warm, cozy pajamas because we're getting another cold streak. Wisconsin, winter time, we get a little bit of cold weather. So it's threatening to be snow and like super duper cold, like minus 30s wind chill and minus 30s. And so to me, that's cold. And I bundle up in my warm robes and my cozy pajamas and I wrap up in blankets sometimes too because it's all about being comfortable and not freezing to death. So proof is in the pudding. I have always heard this expression, I, not always, but mostly as proof is in the pudding. And what does that mean? It means that the proof of something is in the results. And the actual saying is proof is in the proof of the pudding is in the eating, meaning success is measured by the final result. So the process that we and, and what this implicates is that the process um, is either a success or a failure based on whether the result is a success or failure. Now, I'm not sure that that's necessarily true because I've become a firm believer in the fact that our life is our overall creation and living a life that makes us feel the way we want to feel is my measure of a successful life now. And that means all of the experiences, everything that we go through to become who it is we're going to become mm -hmm. when we finally leave this planet is what what really matters. And I, I tr tried to figure out, and I studied and researched and tried to figure out, well, what is my purpose for a really long time? And I, I felt lost and I felt like I wasn't good enough. And why don't I have this certain talent that just shines up and rises above like, you know, people that are really good artists or great singers definitely not a great singer here even my granddaughter my, my kids used to always tell me not to sing but then it my granddaughter does the same thing and I'm like okay I guess singing is never gonna be my thing so I used to wonder not not even just when I was a kid but as I got older and as I was you know going through my career and through my life I thought wouldn't life have just been easier if I was a graceful ballet dancer or if I was a great athlete again miss the miss the athletic genes but wouldn't it life have been so much easier because I was comparing myself to others and it seemed like the results other people were getting were were better than mine whenever we compare ourselves to others we're setting ourselves up for disappointment and failure right whenever anybody compares themselves to us they're setting their themselves up for failure as well because guess what Nobody can be a better you than you. Nobody can be a better me than me, right? And people might think, well, why the, why on earth would I want to be you? You are weird as heck. You're standing here or sitting. You're actually sitting here talking to us in your pajamas. Who does that? Who does that crazy stuff? Well, I do because that's, that's me. And I found a long time ago that I wasn't taking care of myself and I wasn't paying attention to how I feel. And it became important that I prove to myself that I, that I matter, that I need to take care of myself before I can take care of my businesses, before I can take care of my kids, before I can take care of anyone else. You know, they always tell you in the airplane when you're flying, put your air mask on yourself first in the case there's an emergency and then put it on your child. And so many of us, at least I fell into that trap, lived just the opposite way. I ran through my life and did everything for everybody else and put my self-care and my sleep and my eating and my taking care of myself last until of course I got that huge wake-up call that said uh, and I got I got progressively louder wake-up calls but I wasn't listening until I actually had the huge hey you're gonna die if you don't change this and I actually had a, a sudden cardiac arrest and did die and I'm super fortunate to be here still talking about um, anything <laughs> so I knew that that was my wake-up call to absolutely positively massively change the way I was doing certain things in my life. You know, in our lives, of course, there's, I say that there's seven key areas we need to pay attention to in our life. Our physical well-being, because guess what? If we don't have our health, we don't have anything. So you better take care of the body that you've got, because whatever it is, you got to love it, because it's the only one you're going to get, right? It's the only one you got while you're here, so you better take care of it. So our physical well-being our mental, our emotional, and our spiritual well-being. We have to pay attention to those. We have to pay attention to our financial well-being because guess what, as much as we don't want to admit it sometimes, money is what makes our life work. Money is what makes our world go round in many instances. It just, 
greases the wheel and makes things more smoothly for us, right? It gives us options and freedom to do more of what it is that we want and love to do. And then we have to deal with the areas of our relationships in our life and our contribution. How are we going to make a difference? How are we going to go through our life? What are we going to do? How are we going to be? How are we going to show up? And how are we going to contribute to ourselves and those we love and care about and to other areas of the world? How are we going to make the world a better place? How are we going to contribute? And I say, make the world a better place. I don't say, how are you going to get the most that you can get for you and screw the rest of the world? Because I don't believe in that. I believe that we're all here to make a positive difference. And wouldn't it be an interesting world if everybody had that perspective? Hey, I'm not here just to scrape my way through and survive and get by and get my little piece of the pie. I'm here to become the best version of myself, the best person I can be, and to positively impact the rest of the world, to be an example for the rest of the world, right? Not a warning. Let's all be examples, not warnings. So proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I like this because to me it says um, the end result, although it kind of says the end result is, and I think it's more the eating is an experience, right? The experience of the end result proves whether the journey was a success or a failure or was worth it or not. It's interesting. All of the things that we experience are unique and personal to us. Now, <clears throat> this is a really complicated topic because we feel all alone whenever we're experiencing something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially negative things or bad things in our life. I mean, when we have health challenge, health challenges make us feel alone and scared and frightened. We feel like we're the only one. Now, at any given time, any health challenge we're going through, there's always a whole lot of other people going through the exact same thing or something so similar that they actually can relate to us, although we feel like they can't relate to us. When I had my sudden cardiac arrest, I don't, I don't remember the statistics, but there's like other people going through that experience at the exact same time, right? Although when you're going through it, when I was going through it, I felt like, okay, I'm the only one. I'm going to have to figure this out by myself because, you know, the doctor's going to give me a little information. Um, no one in my family's ever had anything like this or experienced anything like this. So I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to research. I'm going to have to figure out what do I need to do to make sure that something like this never happens to me again until I am ready to actually exit the planet permanently, right? Uh, <clears throat> so sometimes... We, under, we feel like we're all alone, but we actually really never are. And there's always answers out there if we go searching for them. There's always help and answers. Although our journey, our experiences are personal, right? The problems and the obstacles and the challenges that we face whenever we're moving through our life or, or going for things that we want or setting a goal and wanting something or uh, wanting to achieve something, the, the obstacles and the lessons along the way, they are unique to us. The, the way... The types of challenges are, are not unique, but the way they show up in our life is unique and it's for us, for our benefit. Now, I gotta tell you, sometimes it doesn't feel like that, right? Sometimes when we're facing challenges and obstacles, one after another, when we're trying to achieve a goal, it feels like pressure and are we ever gonna get there? And sometimes we wanna quit and give up. The only way to fail at getting what we want, the only way to fail in our journey is to quit and to give up and to just settle for things that are less than what we're capable of, less than what we want, right? And I'll admit it, there have been times in my life where I've gotten comfortable in, you know, in my career and in my job and in my family life in the past where I was kind of comfortable and, I, and I'd say, geez, I should really be appreciating this and good with this and say, okay, I can, I can live this way. And then after about an hour of that, maybe a day, I would be like, oh, hell no, this is not good enough. I'm not staying here. This is awesome. And I totally appreciate it, but I am not done yet, right? Even when I woke up in the hospital out of the coma after my sudden cardiac arrest, I thought, hmm, where the hell am I? <laughs> What's going on? Why did this happen to me? And what am I going to do about it? But I'm certainly not done yet, right? So... Proof of the pudding is in the eating. What do you think about this expression? Have you had experience with this? Uh, I think of the experiences I've had with it, this about thinking about um, the results that we get and the journey to achieving them. I think about things that I've wanted and what I've done to get there and, and to achieve those goals. And uh, never has there been 
a direct and straight line to anything that I wanted. I, I, I can't think of, of anything that I have ever wanted that was worthwhile and a big thing to me that just landed in my lap. It was always something that I had to decide that I wanted and then I had to take steps and actions to move toward that thing. When I wanted a job out of college, it didn't just land in my lap. I had to study, do well in school, learn a lot, get experiences in life and in work, and then go to job interviews and, and interview around. And, and I will admit that throughout my career, jobs and getting a job that I wanted did come pretty easily for me because I understood and I learned the process of, of what it took to satisfy the requirements that they were asking for in a job. And when you match your skills and experiences with the requirements of the job, you're solving a problem for that organization. So it's pretty easy for them to fire, to fire you, to hire you. And if you can demonstrate that you've solved problems like that and did things in the past, people believe that the past equals the future. Your past performance is an indicator of how you will perform in the future. I, I believe that that's not necessarily true. And of course it's not necessarily true. And even, I would argue, even is that a good indicator? Not necessarily, but that's the assumption of the masses and most people, so we go with it. Uh, and when I was going for a job to work for other people, that's what I would do. I, I don't know how many people in this day and age or in when I was still in corporate America found jobs in the newspaper, <laughs> but I actually got three very good jobs and career advances from from advertisements in the newspaper. Now, if you know the probability and statistics and how many people actually respond to jobs in the newspaper, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Even I was surprised sometimes that I was able to land jobs in the newspaper and, and that they were even advertised in the newspaper, but it uh, it's interesting. And and maybe, and I'm, I'm not talking entry level jobs, I'm talking high-end corporate executive jobs I got by finding out about them being in the newspaper. So it's kind of a weird thing. I just thought about that today. So proof is in the pudding. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. The proof of the process and the experiences that we've had is in how we feel about the results that we get and how we feel about the experiences more than the actual result that we get ourselves. Um, and I could talk about that probably for an hour about stories and experiences and how um, it's, it's our transformation that really matters because that's going to impact how we really feel and how we impact our life and the world and the people around us more than whether we actually land that specific client or get that award or certification or whatever. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking about this morning as I did my Supersize Your Business segment. It's all about proof of the pudding is in the eating. Now, I'm a big cook, so I really like these expressions that have anything to do with cooking and food and processes and systems. Uh, what else is going on? Challenges. I am currently auditing and going through, but not 100%, four challenges right now. I'm doing, um, and I'm, I'm not even going to remember the names of them. Um, Rachel S. Lee has got a pop challenge. Um, Kelly Roach has got the live launch. One Funnel Away Challenge, of course. Um, Grace Lever is doing a Create Your Course Challenge, Create Your Course in Five Days Challenge. And hers is a little bit different, but I'm just kind of auditing and watching people's processes and challenges because challenges are my jam. Challenges are my thing. I'm learning that challenges and obstacles and problems are my, my talent, my superpower. I just have automatically found ways to overcome obstacles and challenges throughout my life and I didn't even realize until recently that that, that, is, that is a thing that people struggle with is overcoming challenges and figuring things out and getting the results that they want being the proof of the pudding is in the eating um, faster, easier, more efficiently and more effectively than they ever imagined possible. And I say, hey, we can get you a result in days, not years. And there's a couple really little tricks that you can use to massively increase your ability to get results in any area of your life. But I talk mostly specifically with respect to business because I help people grow and build and supersize their businesses. Uh, so I'm auditing four challenges right now and I'm, I'm actually participating in doing them and I'm just watching the process because the way we learn, the way I learn and apply things is to step back and look at the bigger picture. I'm more of a bigger picture thinker and watch exactly what people are doing. And one of my big 
um, measures on whether I follow or listen to someone or not is are they doing what they're selling are they actually demonstrating and using what they sell it's part of why I love click funnels click funnels is all built on and runs on their own software they use their own software to create the funnels that they're selling to everyone else love that and that's how part of how I decide who I'm gonna follow Jim Edwards one of my favorite people in the whole wide world is a huge copywriter he uses his own wizards he created his wizards and funnel scripts and things to make his own life easier and then he's like oh these are really powerful maybe I should share these with other people and so he solves great problems for us because he demonstrates and he actually uses the things that he creates and sells to the rest of us and so I'm auditing programs to see are people actually doing what they are telling us to do um, one of the signs of a guru who doesn't really have a depth of experience is when they're just regurgitating material that they've learned from someone else and they actually aren't even using it or doing the things that they've learned in their own life in their own experience so they don't have their own experiences with it um, and I guess that's there's nothing wrong with that for entry-level type things but when you're depending on your customer and who you're solving problems for and what you're doing for them you got to have some level of experience and knowledge that you can share with them to help them get the results that they want um, so I'm auditing a bunch of challenges and my next challenge will I should probably look at a calendar and set the date right now it will be in March sometimes my next my next I'm gonna do a, a, I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different the same but now it's different than what I've been doing over the last 20 years I've done a lot of challenges and I tend to do a challenge and leave it out there in the universe that the internet universe nowadays uh, and anybody if they were creative hint hint could go and find some of my challenges right uh, last week I did a challenge I'm um, called the live thrive challenge which is not a great name but I told myself I was gonna do a challenge and I always do what I say I'm gonna do so as soon as I decided I was gonna do that challenge I just did it and I didn't have a great name for it so I did it on my Thrive Challenge page which is kind of where I share a lot of my challenges uh, and I just did it and then I put it in the, the challenge group and I've decided to do a couple of different things and a couple of different tests on this next challenge going forward I'm actually gonna do one of those challenges where the content goes up and then it disappears I'm gonna do a pop-up group and a pop-up challenge and it's gonna be there for the the duration of the challenge which is nine to ten days and then the content will all disappear I have never done a disappearing challenge before but it seems to be the way to really get people to take action and move if we know that the information is only gonna be there for a limited time guess what we're more likely to carve out the time in our busy schedules and make time to get the result that we want in that short period of time five-day challenges come on five-day challenges if you're, there's a result you want and you can't dedicate like an hour a day for five days in a row how badly do you really want that thing I know that in the past when I want something there is nothing that's gonna stop me from taking action every day to get that thing oh, but it depends it depends on your circumstances it depends how much pain you're in it depends um, how long you've been struggling with the problem it depends if you believe that the person that's leading you through the challenge can really show you the way to get the result that you want to get the result that they're promising <clears throat> I've had lots of practice on that so I guarantee I can get you the result that I'm promising you in the challenge or I wouldn't say I can do it I have a very strong belief in under promising and over delivering and that comes from my corporate days working in you know billion dollar companies where the sales department would get us in huge jams I actually ran the quality function but they would get us in huge jams because quality had to go solve all the problems right so if a customer wasn't happy about something because sales said we could do something that we weren't technologically capable of doing this is me pulling out my hair uh, I was the one that had to go fix and repair that and guess what sometimes you can't repair that sometimes you just have to give people hundreds of thousands of dollars back in refunds because someone in another department promised something that your manufacturing department and your production department could not deliver it wasn't it wasn't even capable of doing right we're not capable of doing this so don't promise that we can uh, <clears throat> uh, so that 
uh, fun day. I'm doing a 365 day challenge already. I think that I'm not doing a challenge, but I'm always doing challenges, right? I'm, I'm doing this daily. This would be could be considered a challenge where I hop online every day and I talk about my journey. I talk about what I'm doing as I transition from corporate America and the brick and mortar world of businesses, lots of different businesses, to the online world and the journey that I'm having as I make that transition and why I even want to make that transition, right? I think most of us <clears throat> hop into the online world for a couple of reasons. One, we want more freedom, we want more time, we want the promise that all of the experts and gurus tell us it's gonna come so easily. And again, at day 745, how easily does it really come? You know, uh, and, I, and I think it can, can come a lot more easily and for some people it comes a lot more easily, but one of those people that tends to overthink and overcomplicate everything. And the, <clears throat> I think one of the keys to success online is to find a simple model, keep it simple and just implement that model and then figure out what feels good and what works for you. And then when you find the thing that feels good and works for you, do more of that and then teach other people how to do that, right? <clears throat> that seems to be the success model online. So working on that, a fun day challenge today was day 36 and it was all about compliments. So today I'm gonna listen for, and I encourage you to listen for as well, compliments and, and graciously accept those compliments and thank people for them. Uh, how we accept compliments, how we show up, how we react to things, how we say things, what we say always shows people who we are. It's kind of a secret in life and I don't think most people think about and realize that. And even when I have a bad reaction, I, I forget sometimes that that's all about me having a bad reaction to something. <clears throat> Example, my ex-husband can still trigger me. He knows all the buttons to push to get me upset. And as much as I try to be level-headed and kind and emotional, sometimes he just pushes my buttons and triggers the living daylights out of me. And now I'm a lot quicker at catching myself and noticing that when I get triggered, but I still get sucked in sometimes, right? I still get pulled into some of his circular arguments and pulled into arguments or disagreements with him. And <clears throat> I get mad at myself because I let myself get triggered, right? But like anything else, it's a continually improving process. We are human beings and as human beings, we are always evolving and changing and improving. And so sometimes we're gonna mess up, sometimes we're gonna screw up. And that's just part of our journey of learning and becoming who it is that we wanna be. Um, that is probably all I've got today. I'm starting to ramble and I've got a ton of things to do and the little four-year-old granddaughter is gonna be here any minute. So I'm gonna sign off, wish you an absolutely amazing day. Love to know what you think about the expression, the proof of the pudding is in the eating and your experience with that. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts and, and questions about challenges or what kind of challenges you are facing that uh, you'd like to see me do a challenge on because I, I do do challenges kind of across the board. I've done health challenges because that's an area of, of importance to me. I have not done any relationship challenges. So a relationship challenge might be a challenge for me if that's something somebody wants me to see me work on. I've done lots of business challenges. So if there's any area of your business that you would like to see a uh, an improvement on, and I'm talking a rapid, massive improvement on, hit me up in the comments below and, and, and maybe I'll create a challenge just about that and, and we'll get other people because I guarantee if you're having a problem and a challenge in your life, you are not the only one. There's probably a million other people right now experiencing the same exact challenge that you are. <clears throat> Although again, each of our challenges is and each of our journeys is unique and special to us. And so we, we like to customize things to make sure that you are getting your specific needs met. I'm big on customization. All right, have an absolutely amazing day. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow for another update on what am I working on, what's working, what's not, what direction, um, and what can I maybe help you with. And that's it, have a great day.